Whoa, me again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this video is going to get posted or not. Maybe I'll put it together with some other videos. Um, it's all this kind of redundant nonsense, this merry-go-round of arguments with these uh, nihilist types. So anyway, off the day, did a drunk video. Um, I didn't watch all of it, but uh, you know, I watched to the point where he said something ludicrous, like, when Mendham says, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never said that. I've never said, trust me. Um, uh, as the foundation for my philosophical perspective, apparently. And it's just so insane, a description, that you're just like, well, what, <laughs> why am I arguing with somebody who can't get it even close to right? Um, trust the facts, I might say. I never have, but I might say something like, trust the evidence. <laughs> yeah, trust logic. I might say that. Uh, certainly, as compared to just ludicrous made-up stuff that feels better. Yeah, logic is good. Okay. Um, but, uh, trust me? Come on. It's just so... But anyway, there's just nothing to say to that. That's just so insane, an interpretation. So then Hoffley Day, I mean, uh, Anticondivide, also did some similar critique. And we're just back to this guilt thing. And uh, he says, well, he calls it responsibility. <laughs> yeah, well, it's sort of a big difference. Um, as I pointed out, guilt has absolutely no value. Um, but a sense of responsibility, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. A sense of recognizing proportionality and that you have an economy you're living in and that you are responsible in the sense that you're obligated in a sense to run a profit that when you're playing with somebody else's welfare you've got to play with it to their advantage that's uh, an insane fanatical crazy idea you know that uh, you should be mindful of the fact that in the end, that's all that's going to be left as residue of your existence is whether it sweetened or soured the stew, whether you improved it or degraded it, whether you made a mess somebody had to clean up, whether you ran a deficit for which somebody else had to pay. These are obnoxious conceptual thoughts for intelligence to ponder? Oh, please. I mean, you, you can't honestly tell me that that would be his conclusion. Of course not. So, but in total Nietzsche style, this guy is just so unaccountable. He just points his fingers at every civilization in the history of mankind and tells us why they're wrong. And indirectly, <laughs> the, the idea is I must be right because everybody else is wrong. Um, and it's just ludicrous, right? But it's the Nietzsche cop-out. Um, complaining, tearing down is so easy. Building up is so much more difficult. And he has no courage as a builder. Um, none whatsoever. He'll take no responsibility for doing or saying anything that means anything except to complain about somebody else's lack of performance by his standards. I mean, just an amazing, uh, <laughs> uh, poor performance way of uh, propagandizing yourself uh, into some sort of perception like you're something by just uh, pointing out the nothing of something else. Uh, just cheap. Um, pedestrian. <laughs> so, so that's what it really comes down to for him. He has this view of all these little pedestrian pleasures, all these little silly things that make people smile and go, ha ha. I mean, the laughing baby on Teletubby is his definition of utopia. That's all it's about. Be a frivolous, silly, happy thing. Doesn't matter whether you apply intelligence in your life, 
you live efficiently or decently. Now, as long as there's a smile on your face, you've done your job. Uh, that's the end of the equation. Uh, and <laughs> again, um, atheists applaud this nonsense and in turn uh, give people cause to fear them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, really, you, you can't really just set the monsters loose. We know what chaos breeds. Um, you know, consolidation and tyranny will be all you'll get for your, your um, nonsensical notions that humans can make it all work out, just be themselves. But see, that's the joke of it. He thinks we have worked it all out. He thinks the human race is a marvelous success because all the victims are dead and uh, all the suffering is in the past, you know, the suffering caused already, and uh, therefore, yeah, what's the big deal? No failure. World War II wasn't a failure. Huge success. Um, the plague, the, the periodic bouts with uh, cholera and whatnot, yeah, it's all for the win. Uh, by his standards, it's all an acceptable price because some idiot has a smile on their face. And, uh, I mean, I, you know, even in an ideal world where there was no harm, I wouldn't want uh, to have a smile on my face for frivolous and silly reasons. I'd at least want the dignity of uh, having some better sense of aesthetics. A uh, better sense of uh, what would awe me or impress me. Um, but it's all crap in the end. It's all just psychology. And that's the joke of it, right? It's, he's arguing fundamentally for that point of view, yet defending the most pedestrian and trivial of elements of human psychology the silliest ambitions, the silliest addictions, the silliest attachments seem to be the ones he is uh, you know, most defensive of and protective of. Um, the crap of idiocracy uh, is, seems to be uh, something for which he has a great deal of affection. Um, and will spend a great deal of time defending the simpleton notions of the, um, you know, the crudest among us. And again, gets applause from the crowd of assholes. And what else can you call people who <laughs> demand nothing? Nothing. Zero. Uh, no profit necessary. No accounting for the losses and uh, call that uh, some sort of intelligent construction. That is a nice vine up there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have to think of something to do with that. Anyway, um, so I may be back or may not be. Yeah, see how it goes. See, how the, see where this video goes. Till next time, such. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Ah, oh, a little bit of rain. Um, so anyway, it makes the crunchy even better, right? I guess I should wait till it gets wet enough, and then the leaves won't crunch anymore. But then I'll... Alright, I'm wasting time. So let's see, do I have anything more to say? Yeah, I think there's an order to the conversation where you just have to establish, do you believe or do you not believe? Um, you know, if you understand... Uh, the physical universe <coughs> is matter consolidating, and on planet Earth, it consolidated into a replicating molecule. That the replicating molecule <coughs> created organisms with abilities, tools for survival. That the tool we've been endowed with <laughs> uh, is feelings and thinking. And uh, the feeling thing seems like pretty much everything. 
<laughs> you know, you don't feel good, you, you don't have anything, you got nothing. Um, and uh, it seems pretty obvious. Seems pretty obvious, at least I didn't say obvious, I just say, you know, a, a seven-year-old could do it. <laughs> this isn't challenging as a logical conversation, but feelings are significant in their qualitative state they produce and that that's what we're exchanging. As we walk our way through the life, we exchange with other organisms feelings. We impose uh, and they impose on us. Um, and our conversation, in my opinion, all meaningful conversation, should be about how to maximize the performance of those exchanges, those interactions, to mm, first do no harm, or little harm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's no harm really. You're only rationalizing to say there needs to be any harm. Uh, and once you say that, you're done. <laughs> you know, because this isn't a no harm game. The whole game is premised on creating need and deprivation and dependency and addiction. It's all about uh, mitigations against uh, the default negative forces of need. Uh, it's the only game in town. It's not a good game. And if you're going to play it hard, and you should at least have the guts to defend it with something real. You should have at least the guts to say, I think I'm worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, be, show your true arrogant colors, your true egoistic, vain uh, colors, and just say it. You don't care about victims. You just care about what is in it for you. You are an idiot. Just admit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're too stupid to do basic mathematics. Admit it. Quit pretending, uh, you know, that there is no math to be done. Uh, quit pretending uh, there's some other story of reality that has any hope of being accurate. Yeah, so this isn't... I shouldn't have to redo this over and over again, but nobody will stay on subject. They will not explain evolution. They won't explain the cruel nature of nature. They will not account for any of the facts of our existence, which are not good facts. They just run away from them and say, maybe something else is real. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I was just thinking of metaphors for silly maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the hunters just want to pet the deer. Uh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just, you know. No, maybe. We know we can. <laughs> you can know the truth. It's easy to see. It's written in all these leaves and grass and dirt right there. It's not elusive. And it's tragic. All over the place. Anyway. And you're just a glib asshole. You can't see that. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Alright. I think I've done my job. And so we'll add some more maybe later. Uh, and maybe we'll add some more. Maybe I'll make this a Docu video. <laughs> yeah, make like 17 videos. 
17. I wonder why that number came to mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, till the next time. And uh, such and so forth. Yeah, look at the ferns one more time. Ferns. Ferns. Fernies. Ferns. Anyway. So. Uh, until next time. Oh, key, sort of. A key. Cat, go in your house. Retard. He's <laughs> just so stupid. He's got a really great house. I don't know why he's not going in it lately. It's just spectacular in there. It really is. Oh. So nice. The pillows. You can probably see all that. pillows in there. I don't know. It's pretty dark in there, but very nice in there. Anyway. Until next time. As he said, he sits under a chair. You're stupid. Like humans. Anyway. Until next time. Press the button. Ah, back inside. I figure I'll finish up when I'm waiting for a video to render badly. <laughs> yeah, very badly. Crappy Star Trek movie. Yeah, time warping bullshit. And such. Digital photo frame stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll show too much there. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway. Uh, it's finishing up, yeah. So in the Conavod and uh, Hothler Day and the general group of whatever they are, non... I, I mean, they, you know, they keep talking as if they're not theistic, but they are have some sort of receptiveness or openness to some sort of phantasmagorical explanation for what is obviously... Um, you know, a human that has evolved from being a salamander. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, a, a few hundred million years ago, um, you know, we were monstrous, more monstrous, more obviously monstrous, um, but in some ways less monstrous, right? I mean, isn't that the irony, right? Because we spent most of those hundreds of millions of years um, as a vegetarian animal, as a pacifist, uh, eking out an existence kind of animal, um, not a harm maker. Um, and, you know, we changed that habit because of fire. You know, we figured we could throw stuff on the Barbie and watch it squeal and uh, yum yum. Um, but what else, what, 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 is, what is the argument? Where it's what we are. We're feeding machines, like all the other feeding machines, in a battle of tool making. And we've sort of taken ourselves out of the competition in the sense that we're not going to, you know, we're going to wear spikes on our shoes and we're going to have a steel bat and we're going to have a spiked ball and we're going to have a cork to this and a cork, and we're going to cheat all over the place. and and, um, you know, pretend we're still in a game of some kind, um, still justify the carnage of the game, even though we're not even playing it fair anymore. Um, but what else, what, what is the story? The story is not a great story. It's just this evolution thing. You know, make monsters. And then we have the intelligence. We, we, we finally gain an attribute that actually has some value. It actually means something. It's not a sword. It's not a shield. Um, you know, it's something more profound. As a, uh, um, and it's a, as a, as a, obviously as a consequence, a side. Uh, um, what's the word? I'm like a residue <laughs> of the game. It's obviously not something evolution um, intended to be used the way we're using it in the sense that. We were given the ability long before we had anything to feed it, long before we um, we could go to school, before we built the school, ironically. And uh, and that we do nothing with. We we just mold it to 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 make it more possible for us to to, to build a light so we can stick our sword in deeper, um, so we can be more of an animal, 
using our intelligence to be more of an animal. And these people are proud of that. These glib motherfuckers are proud to use their intelligence that way. To use it just to put a little smile on their stupid glib faces and say, there, I've done my job. Um, call that a dignified life. Something they should be proud of. Hilarious. Ironically, hilarious. So anyway, enough. Yes. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Been there, done this. Yeah. Anyway, the next time.